Father God, we give this evening to you. We thank you so much that we have the privilege to be able to come together and and be here together to worship you and give you all the glory and honor. I just pray safety for everyone, family and friends. And we just, we look to you, Lord, for you are such an awesome God. Amen. Well, welcome. Welcome to Impact Ministry Center. My name is Meveline Anderson, and I'm part of the team here. And I think we're going to go right into announcements, are we? I see still, you're still doing something back there. Working on it, working on it. All right, Nathan, take it away. Righty. Sounds like a plan. <clears throat> well, again, welcome everybody to uh, Impact Ministry Center. My name is Nathan Entrickin, and I'm also part of the team here. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I love it. For those that you that are watching online, we would love to have you come out and join us live and in person. Um, Madeline, let me switch microphones with you. All right, there we go. See, I gave her the really good microphone, the one that actually works and doesn't drop out at all. So uh, again, as I was saying, those of you that are watching online, we'd love for you to come out and join us live and in person. We are located at uh, 2260 Holly Springs Parkway in Holly Springs, Georgia at the uh, Mountain Brook Retail Center, which is right up the road from the Walmart on the right-hand side. So we'd love for you to come out and be with us. And for those of you who are wondering what Impact Ministry Center is all about, well, we're a lot of different things, but and I think during this time, um, not only can we say we're training and activation, like we, we know that God gives words to everybody. We want to train you to hear God's voice, right? That's how you know he's speaking. But I think in this time, we have what's called a Sons of Issachar anointing. And that Sons of Issachar anointing means that uh, if you look at what it says in the Bible, it says that uh, there were men that understood the times and understood what Israel should do and knew what Israel should, should do, right? So I think during this time, God is really speaking out in the world world right now. And, and for those of us that are, are trained to hear his voice, he's really given us clear instructions on what's, on what's going on. We see, we don't need to be intimidated by the darkness. We don't need to be intimidated by the things we see happening because all of this has been prophesied. All of this has been, has been told to us that it was going to happen. And he's been telling us to remain faithful. Now is the time for us to concentrate our, on our relationship with him. That more than anything is going to see us through through these 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 times that are that have been happening, and so I would encourage you uh, just to really press into the Lord during these these times, and that's what this is all about. So we, that's why whenever you see different people up here, we know everyone has has gifts. That's why you see different people here um, um, prophesying, teaching, bringing words, uh, doing worship, all of those things, because we know that sometimes it's a little difficult in churches because of the way churches are set up. Not everyone can have that opportunity to be able to learn and grow. So that's why we want to work with the ministries that are around us. We want to work with the churches that are around us. We are a connecting point, and we really want to help you train to become the minister of the gospel that God has called each and every one of you to be. Because, I mean, that's where the rubber meets the road is when we're out there in the highways and byways, you know. That's what it's supposed to be about, that we're supposed to train and equip people to become ministers of God. Ministers not necessarily in the church, although that is part of it, but ministers of the gospel out there. Because those the it is a lost and dying world out there. And it tells us in the Bible that the Lord has literally placed, uh, not, not the Lord, I'm sorry, Satan has placed darkness around people to blind their minds so they cannot see the light of the gospel. And so, but the, the Lord has called us to dispel that darkness. And so, um, you know, a lot of times that our churches, we've been, we've been in, that, in that mode where we've been um, really sequestered from being a part of, of the world. You know, now we live in the world, but we're not supposed to be of the world. And so that means we're supposed to have authority to dispel the darkness. And that's what we want to train you to be able to do here, to fulfill the call that God has placed on your life, to learn and grow in Him. And so we would encourage you just to come out and be with us. For those of you that would like to 
partner with us financially. We have offering buckets in the corners of the room. Would um, No one here gets paid. All the money that comes in uh, goes to keep the place running, to invest in, in the work of, of the ministry. So, uh, And then if you want to give online, you can do that at impactministrycenter.org. Uh, and uh, we also do have, um, well, we had mentioned before about prophecy and everything else. Everything here gets recorded, and uh, we do um, broadcast this live on Facebook, and you can certainly go back and watch it. But um, as we've seen time and time again, those videos somehow get missing. And it, it happens from time to time. We, we may say something, and all of a sudden they just drop off. Some, sometimes there's a warning. Sometimes there's a, no, we just don't like that. It's gone. So, uh, but... What we do is we upload everything to YouTube and to Rumble. And so sometimes uh, YouTube gets us uh, for um, you know things here and there uh, that they don't like. But that's okay. It's on Rumble as, as well. So if you'd like to be notified when those things are uh, uploaded out there on YouTube and Rumble, we do have an email list that, uh, it, that's in the back. We'd love for you to put down your contact information. And we'll certainly uh, keep you updated on the happenings of what's going on here. So... Uh, we have lots of things going on in the community, and um, Marianne and Levy Rents right there, they've been having a meeting, it's been going on for a couple years now, uh, over at their house at 67 Antioch Church Road, and it's an amazing time of revival and refreshing, and uh, uh, intense ministry, prophecy, all kinds of things that go, go on there, and uh, would love for you to come out and join them, and that's every Friday at uh, 7 p.m. If you have any questions, you can certainly reach, uh, go over there and talk to them, and you can call them. There's their contact information right there. And then also, uh, every second Tuesday of the month, we have uh, Cherokee Resilience. They've been meeting here at 6.30 p.m. And uh, this is all talking about uh, self-sufficiency, community duty, literacy, um, I'm sorry, civic duty and literacy. I mean, how many, how many times have you seen in our communities now, I don't know if you've had a conversation with a young person, they have no idea of anything to do with civics. You know, that class has gone away. No one knows anything about civics any, any, anymore. I mean, it's like one of, those, one of those things. They don't know how our government works, which I believe is also a plan. So if you want to learn and have, be literate on what happens in our government, uh, you know, uh, Cherokee Resilience is the place. You've got local community with the economy, uh, education, spiritual growth, and mentorship. Um, you know, and just as we've seen, you know, these, these interruptions are going to keep happening, like what happened with the dock workers this, this week. And for those of you who don't know, this, the, the strike is over. Um, as of tomorrow, they're going back to work tomorrow. Uh, they've reached a tentative agreement. So uh, that was just announced literally about half an hour ago. So, um, so, but we see how fragile our distribution network is. And this is, this is one of those, those things that uh, Cherokee Resilience helps with. It, it talks about, you know, what happens when those kinds of things fail. How can you get food? How can you get services? How can you get things like, like that? And so that's what Cherokee Resilience is, is about. So, and that is a part of uh, Take Action Cherokee. So I encourage you to come out uh, for that. Again, second Tuesday of the month at 6.30 p.m. And then uh, also um, for the next five Fridays <clears throat> here, we are going to have a uh, a prayer meeting to declare and decree not only over this election but over our country itself and so that's what we're going to be standing against we're going to be standing against those principalities those powers uh, everything that is coming against our nation and I love uh, I love this this verse first Corinthians uh, 16 13 14 be on the alert stand firm in the faith be men of courage be strong do everything in love and that's what we're, we're going to be praying into these these things for the next five weeks, this, the, I mean, believe it or not, guys, it's five weeks to the election. Five weeks. Can you believe it? Five weeks. So we are going to be standing firm every Friday um, from 7 to 8 p.m., and uh, we're going to make it quick uh, but focused. And so we are going to, um, you know, starting tomorrow night, so I encourage all of you to come out tomorrow night. We're going to start. So um, absolutely. Let's see. I think that's it. Yes. Thank you. Get the good one. As James works his 
way up to the front. <laughs> No, I'm not ready for you, but you can stand right there or sit right there. That's fine. <laughs> I did, we just wanted to have entertainment. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate that. Thanks, James. We're laughing with you, not at you. Really? <laughs> All righty. Well, as you, um, we've already talked about, this is the new year. This is Rosh Hashanah, and it's also called Yom Teruda which the Teruah actually means shouting and blasting is what it, what it really means. And on the shofar, there's different kinds of sounds, and the Teruah is actually the one that has a, the sharp stic, um, staccato, where it's... Dit, 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 dit. So that's what he's going to... Um, that's what Dan... This is my husband, Dan. <laughs> and that's what Dan is going to be doing. Um, but Rosh Hashanah is the, the new year, and it's the first of the high holy days of, the Jew, of all of the Jewish festivals. So it's the very first one of the high holy days. And I wanted to correct something that I had said last week. Um, actually, the 10 days of atonement actually start on Rosh Hashanah. So, and James is going to be going in more into that. Um, but that's the day of the atonement. And that is actually the holiest day of the entire Jewish calendar is uh, Yom Kippur. So, um, and so this is a time where the Lord really wants us to, to reflect because the year is going to be set. So, uh, just a second, I'm going to go ahead and read this and then I want you to do whatever the Lord tells you to do. Go sit down. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> So, as you all know, today is the third, and I'm going to read a portion of Proverbs 3. My child, when the Lord speaks to you, never take his words lightly and never be upset when he corrects you. For the Father's discipline comes only from his passionate love and pleasure for you. Even when it seems like his correction is harsh, it's still better than any father on earth gives to his child. Blessings pour over the ones who find wisdom, for they have obtained living understanding. So again, if you're not, I encourage you every day read a different chapter of Proverbs for wisdom because we really need it in this season. So the shofar is a representation of the Lord's voice. So as I blow the shofar, let the voice of the Lord penetrates you and if you want to get up and shout and praise him go for it Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You alone are worthy to be praised. James, come on up. There you go. And thanks, Barb. I'm able to negotiate this. Well, tonight, we talk a little bit more about what's going on for uh, Rosh Hashanah. And the reason it's important is that these Feasts are important, not just as Jews, but for us. As a matter of fact, this is, by the way, 5785, which is what the, the Jews count, uh, the days of creation. We know that there's uh, supposedly about 6,000 days, right? Six days, and then the seventh is millennium. But uh, they're saying it's 5785, but uh, we believe that that's not necessarily where we are, considering we're past the year 2000. So... But one understand about Leviticus 23.1, where it says that biblical, these holidays are biblical, they're not just Jewish. 
And that's an important concept because it says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, The feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. So this is the same Bible, Leviticus, should be in your Bible also. So this is not just for the Jews. This is, says, these are my feasts. So it's important to see these days and realize that many things happen on these days. But we need to understand what they're about. Now, for those who've heard this, uh, what we're going through right now is, is certainly biblical. A lot of people think that just means it's, that it's like it's very big or it's something that's worldwide. But what if biblical actually means biblical? I mean, what if it means that the things that we actually see in the Bible are taking place now? And we understand that all these things, these feasts, were not to celebrate something that just happened years and years ago. They're all about things that are coming. They're prophetic feasts. And they're signs of things that are happening. And it's not just the one time they're fulfilled. They are continued to be fulfilled. Things happen on these days all the way through. Jesus came and, of course, fulfilled the spring feasts when he came. So you don't think that he's going to do that when he returns? So, no, of course, these things are pictures of things. But along the ways, we will have things happen on these days as signs to point to something greater. A sign is something that points to something else, right? Well, when you say a sign, it means, yes, it's something special, but it's to point to something else. And that's what we want to talk about here uh, tonight. So remember this feast, particularly this one, let's start with, is biblical, not just Jewish. And if we look at the holidays, or holy days, as you would call it, we know that Jesus fulfilled the spring ones. But that's the early. That was the, that's the 2,000 years ago. But when he returns, he's going to fulfill the fall holidays. And that's uh, simply what we can see and believe. That yes, there's going to be a harvest. And that harvest, at the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, as Mevelyn talked about, which, uh, there's Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and then the Feast of Tabernacles, which is a seven-day celebration. So if you look at these things, they're very important to where we are now and what's going to happen in their signs. We know that in the millennium, the scripture says that if, you do not, if your nation does not celebrate tabernacles, that you will not get rain that year. And this is during the millennium. So obviously it's to celebrate something big that's going to happen. So what do we think is going to happen? Well, Christ will return on trumpets. That's, the, that's what we're going to see. But then there's this ten days called the ten days of awe that we'll look at, finishing up with the Day of Atonement. So we are right now on the, this is it, this is Rosh Hashanah right now. And it's, they've got it for two days, but the reason is that they're looking at the, the moon and it determines which day of the, the two is going to be, but that's, so you do not know the day and the hour because it's when the moon, uh, the moon reaches, it's the point that they're measuring. So if we look at what's coming here in these high holy days, you'll see that this is 5785 this year. But Rosh Hashanah, uh, Rosh Hashanah is, either way, is Wednesday through Friday night. So it's Wednesday night through Friday night. Then comes Yom Kippur. And as you see, Yom Kippur fits in there between uh, Friday and Saturday. So Friday night and Saturday. And then Sukkoth comes after that, the 16th through the 23rd. And that's the, uh, that's the celebration. And at the end of Sukkot is an eighth-day celebration. So it turns out there's two celebrations. One of them is the, uh, the Shemini Atzeret. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's pretty much the end of the, the, the year from that standpoint because it's when they say we have finished reading the entire Torah all the way through for the year. So that's what that closure is. In Simkat Torah is basically the start over, the new biblical cycle. So it's the eighth day of the celebration. So you can see the picture here of the seven days and then the eighth day. 
Well, this is what we believe is going to happen when Christ returns and goes through this cycle. So we believe that there's some important things that are happening right now that relate directly to that. And that's what I want to talk about here. So as we talked about, what is Rosh Hashanah? Well, it's the festival, but it means head of the year. It's observed the two days, the beginning on uh, Tishri 1, the first day of the Jewish year, and it's the anniversary of the creation of Adam and Eve. But it's also the anniversary of the original sin that, and the judgment of it. So it is a day of both creation and judgment on that same day. It's the, so it says it's the day of judgment and coronation. And that's why you sound the shofar. Because we're going to talk about that, but basically it is a call to repentance, but it's also to announce the king. That's what we say. The central observance is the sounding of the shofar, which represents the trumpet blast of the people's coronation of their king. So can you see that Christ will return on the last trump? Because that's the announcement of his return. The cry of the shofar is also a call to repentance. Because when he returns, he's, it's a day of judgment. But we have Yom Kippur, which is ten days later. So the way you may want to think of that is the judgment comes down, or even the verdict for the year takes place. But it's sealed ten days later. And that's when you, you get the sentencing for the sin that has taken place. And that's called the atonement for that sin. So there's 10 days apart, and it's called, those 10 days are called the 10 days of awe, and they started. So we're in that now. So you can give sort of a feel that that's where we are, folks. This stuff's getting serious. And keep in mind, just because this doesn't mean, that it, well, Christ didn't return this year, so these things aren't going to happen. No, these are patterns that point to something. So we're being called to repentance for these next 10 days, and it's not just us. Understand, the judgments are being laid. So this is a 10-day window that people need to get right with God because that means Yom Kippur is coming and a judgment is coming. So it, that's called the Day of Atonement. Now, we have an atonement through Christ, but there's an atonement for your sin. And I think there's people that are about to pay that. Therefore, it emphasizes special, the, this passing under the rod is what we call it. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with passing under the rod or not. But passing under the rod, it just so happens I have this rod right here. <laughs> it's when uh, they, they build a little sheepfold with a narrow place where the sheep have to go through one at a time. And they take the rod and they look at the, uh, the sheep and they investigate in the just look in its fur and in the wool and so on. But they make a judgment on that sheep to, to say, okay, what's going to happen to this sheep during this coming year? So it's a judgment time, an individual judgment time called passing under the rod. So each year on Rosh Hashanah, that's why I say it's a special relationship because it's a very personal thing. All inhabitants of the world pass before God, pass under the rod like a flock of sheep. And it's decreed in the heavenly court. Who shall live and who shall die? Who shall be impoverished and who shall be enriched? Who shall fall and who shall rise? This is also the day we proclaim God as king of the universe. So these things we can see are, can you see how all this is culminating where we are right now? And I think that's what, I'm, that's what we're sensing. Because it comes from Ezekiel. Ezekiel 20, 36 through 38. As I judged your fathers in the desert of the land of Egypt. That's where we've been. Probably where we are for many of us. So I will judge you, declares the sovereign Lord. I will take note of you as you pass under my rod. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. I will purge you of those who revolt and re revolt and rebel against me, then you will know that I am the Lord. That's the process that we're looking at right now. Are we ready to be purged? Are we ready to get rid of those who are 
re revolting and rebelling against God. What if this is that moment? What if this is that? We've seen a lot of this is that in this season, biblically. I'm ready to see this. And I believe that that's what uh, is taking place. So the word, we get together on Thursday morning for prophetic words. This is the word I had this Thursday morning. And he says, justice will be served. And this is what I heard from was the Lord was sharing with me. Now notice I don't have it in a solid white background. It's actually a little beige there. And the reason is that I don't, this is not scripture. This is what I hear the Lord saying. And that's how we basically indicate uh, what we'll call the prophetic word. This is what he told me. He said, I'm holding court that my judgments can be declared on the people and nations that have violated the sanctity of my creation. Know that justice will be served, for my judgments are true and unanimous in my court. For my word is truth, and I have full understanding of the choices made in the hearts of men. So bring your appeal before me in prayer and receive my judgment and your award. For my supreme court is in session. Let not your heart be troubled, but believe in me and embrace my justice and my mercy. Show mercy on what I show mercy, but stand for justice on what I condemn. And do not be found in the camp of the condemned when my justice comes. And I believe that's where we are. I really do. I believe there's a pattern here. So I said, we're all our prophetic words that we get, we ask for the scripture. and say, Lord, give us scripture behind that. So I will show you the scriptures that he gave me on this. 1 Daniel 7, 25 and 26. He's talking about the Antichrist, the Antichrist government. He said, he will speak against the Supreme God, remember the Supreme Court, and oppose God's people. He will try to change their religious laws and festivals. And God's people will be under his power for three and a half years. Then the heavenly court will sit in judgment and take away his power and destroy him completely. Three and a half years. So that's, you see what's happening here. And what I believe that this is. That yes, you say, well, America's going to be judged. Anybody pay attention to what's been going on the last three and a half years? <laughs> Can you see this is a picture of that? So I said, okay, and, and he gave me this. Daniel eleven thirty two through 36. He said, he's talking once again about the Antichrist and his government. He shall deduce with, uh, seduce with flattery those who violate the covenant, but the people who know their God shall stand firm and take action. You got that? Not only stand firm, but take action. Is he going to take action? Yes, but he's telling us that we need to stand firm and to take action. The wise among the people shall make many understand. So what's the action that you want to take? You want to let the world know the truth. If we look at the situation, we looked at the situation, in, uh, you know, and I'll sort of risk talking about this briefly, but the situation in Lahaina, in Hawaii, there's a lot of things that happened there. And there were a couple of people who basically got themselves starlings and started broadcasting, even though there was not supposed to be any internet or communications there, and it was being blocked, they managed to get in there, take pictures, and go out and interview people and say, this is what's going on here. The wise among the people shall make many understand. So that's where we are right now. We need to make people understand what is really going on in our nation. Though for some days they shall stumble by sword and flame, by captivity and plunder. Yes, we've been under that. When they stumble, though, they shall receive a little help, which we have. The Lord has shown himself. Not like he's going to, I believe, but he will. And many shall join themselves to them with flattery. And this is the evil. And some of the wise shall even stumble. 
so that they may be refined, purified, and made white until the time of the end. Do you see why this last three and a half years was necessary? We had to have three and a half years of good and three and a half years of bad to complete the cycle of training and education for the kingdom. For it still awaits the appointed time. So that's not the last day. That's, that's an education process. And the king shall do as he wills, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak astonishing things against the god of gods. He shall prosper till the indignation is accomplished. For what is decreed shall be done. Is it possible that what we've been going through is a cycle determined by God to wake up his people? To literally cause these things, refining, purification, made white until the time of the end. Can you see that's what's taking place? If this is the end of that cycle, I expect something major to be happening in these next few days. That this thing's, I think he's about to overturn the tables of the money changers. Luke 18, 7 and 8. Justice will come. Now will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. So, wait a minute, seven years, Lord? Is that quickly? No, the justice comes quickly. When it comes, it will come quickly. So yes, there's a period of time. Remember, the speeds of God wait and suddenly. Well, this is the suddenly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? That's what he's trying to produce. Why is that important? That's We understand, remember? It says here, Rosh Hashanah. It's the anniversary of the creation and even the judgment. So can you see that he says in Isaiah 46, 9 and 10, Remember the former things of old, these things. For I am God and there's no other. I am God and there's none like me. I declare the end from the beginning. So these things in the beginning are a picture of the end. The wedding feast, all of this. And from ancient times, things not yet done, saying, my counsel, my words, what I said is going to stand. I will accomplish my purpose. So he has a purpose. And that purpose is all the way back to the creation, the creation of his kingdom and his bride. And that's what this is all about. And therefore, his purpose will stand and it will take place. And if it takes the seven years to wake up people, Yes, we've had to suffer through some times. But is it worth it for the ones who have awakened and began to see the truth? I believe God's trying to produce a bride and a, and a kingdom. And I believe that this season is important to pay attention to because I think we're going to see it in this season. Well, Lord, I thank you. We thank you, Father, for walking us through this time. We want to be in that number, Lord, the number of your bride, the number of the ones that come through, Lord. We want to be prepared, and Lord, we want to take this 10 days of awe to make sure, Lord, that, that we have repented and laid forth to understand your truth. Repentance isn't about what we did wrong. It's about learning what is real and adopting it. Your holiness, your righteousness, your correctness, the things that, that you want done and your purpose. We want to fulfill that. And we thank you for this opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Oh, oh, my Uber is here. Your yes. Go backwards. You can push with one foot. Go backwards. Oh. She's an expert. She knows how to make this thing roll. Oh, yeah, it's hers. So I think she would go backwards. Okay. I'm usually a person that likes to go forward, but I'll. <laughs> Thank you, Barb. Great mercy. I've been there, done that. Trust me. You just never know. Listen, we it's temporary. He's going to get through that. But when you have to do it, you have to do it. So we can learn how to do it efficiently.
So um, I'm Joanna. Most of you know me. I'm Nathan's wife. I have, um, so we're, we're, Nate, um, James and I are kind of um, tagging off each other. I'm kind of on the other side of what this judgment would bring. Because in order to go forward, we have to have a vision. And it has to be one of the kingdom. Because God doesn't do something to just do it. He does it with a purpose. He's always working something out for our good and for the kingdom purpose of, of what he's called his ecclesia to be and truthfully what he's called us to do in this season. So um, there were four words that the Lord had given me over the course since, how many of you remember praying about Jonah and us praying about judgment being passed over and and everything that we went through. And um, I can definitely say we've seen some things come. Actually, our state's been hit pretty great this last few weeks. We've had quite a, quite a bit come at us at one place. And, um, and so I think all of it, um, it has a purpose. And um, it's where you fall on the side of judgment. Who are you going to fall and lean upon? And um, that, that's the reason um, I had the opportunity to pray for the victims of the hurricane this Sunday at church. And, um, and you know, quickly, you know, it was a very humbling thing because the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. And sometimes there is, we don't realize it, but we have socialistic views that have crept into the church where we don't think that it's just that something bad happened to a Christian group but didn't happen to this Christian group. But then you don't really know what went on behind the scenes because the truth is everybody had an opportunity to pray. Now, Nathan really has this theory, and it really, we, we found out today on the call that it, it may really hold true, and is that when we went to bed that night, last Thursday, right here, most of us were praying to advert the storms from our area, because the last we saw, most of us, is that it was headed straight up, 75, coming straight for all of us. That was set for us, and... Um, <laughs> It's kind of appropriate, but yeah. Um, it would, but I, I said to somebody, I said it hit the express lane and it was coming straight up. And um, but but when we went to bed, I don't I don't know unless someone got a word. But I would say most of us did not foresee it taking a turn to the right and devastating those communities in Asheville and Chimney Rock and um, that whole area. You know, and so it's possible that those guys didn't even think about praying that same way. We don't know for sure, and we can't say, but it's highly possible they didn't. But I know that when we pray in faith, in, by our authority, in the sphere of our influence, the Word of God tells me that things must bow to that. And I believe that God heard our prayers and, and our area was spared, but that does not mean I wanted it to harm another space. But unfortunately, it happened. But right now, people are arguing over that right now. Um, over the fact is how dare you say that God spared you to harm us. And, and that's socialism. You know, that's that equity that's crept into the church. And so if you fast track that, what the devil wants us to do is stop praying. Because see, if I'm praying in authority and you're getting harmed, now I need to stop praying because now I'm harming you. So that's not fair. You see how sinister that is? How easy that happens? This is what God's uprooting in his church. These are the things. And it's, it's throughout. We just, you don't really know it until you get in it. And then you see it. And you're like, wow. But the sad thing is the generation coming up that's been brainwashed in this. So we have to walk this out. Because they have to see, oh, yeah, okay, I understand. And we literally, we walked a couple of people through that process because they were convinced that we we're serving the same Jesus, spirit-filled, tongue-talking, but praying the way I prayed was evil. And that's the just, it's crazy, but this is where we're at. And so in that, I believe the justice of God is coming and he's coming to right some wrong things in the church and in the world. 
But since that time of Jonah, the Lord began to give me a series of words. And these words um, were about the church, about where we're going and about where we're going. So I'm just going to um, go over a couple of those. I may pause in the middle. Um, but so the first one was, I have a 2030 agenda. Revival and Reformation. I am calling my forerunners to go forth and unveil my plan to raise up my five-fold church model. It's time for my house to be a house of prayer, foundationally established with apostle, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. This will be my end-time model for my beautiful bride, my glorious church, for she will be without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And I want to stop right there. This comes straight out of Ephesians 4.11. And in that, we realize that the purifying work of the Holy Spirit for us to become like that comes through the work of the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist mission to equip and train the states, the saints. Because it brings us into the unity of the faith by the Spirit, into the full measure of Jesus we can't even become like Jesus until we begin to work together towards this sin as a corporate body. It will come to the individual, obviously, but it's going to come corporately. Therefore, the Lord is serious about establishing. I believe this is on his agenda. There was, um, There's a great man of God. I read his book a second time just recently, but Bill Hammond wrote a book called The Day of the Saints. Many of you may have heard of it or read it, but it's incredible. It is a now word, and we haven't seen it, but that word, it, we're, we're about to step into it, and he was talking about these things, about how he was talking about going into the marketplace and, and acknowledging we spend 98% of our time training the 2% people that behind a pulpit. We should be training people to go out there, not to be behind here. Because only 2%, the five-fold, really are going to be here to train and equip those. It's really, it's like a school, if you will. Church should be operating more like a training camp than like a hospital or I'm not saying that we won't have functions, but most of our churches are, are, are geared to be a community center or a hospital or a place where we comfort each other. There's nothing wrong. We are created for fellowship. That's beautiful. But when the whole existence of, of the church is established into that model, we miss the whole purpose of being called and raised up. But anyways, it said, this kingdom family will displace the nations in my name. She will baptize with fire, release my fullness in my people. These ones will heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, and if they drink deadly poisons, it will not hurt them. They will equip, train, and release this generation into all that I have for them. They will do, be good shepherds with hearts like David and their Lord Jesus. No longer will my house be a den of thieves, a place where the wolves roam free. My church will be full of love, truth, discernment. I will release wisdom to... Um, needed to overcome the plans of the Antichrist agenda. How many of you realize that what we've been walking through in this last season isn't just a series of conspiracies? It's literally the Antichrist agenda. It, and if it was left to its own agenda, um, it would fulfill itself by the third temple and a man of lawlessness at some point would resurrect himself to be God in the temple. But I believe that's not quite yet because we've not seen the glorious bride. We've not seen the beautiful church. And that, that is my belief that this has been all about that. God's been trying to show us we had to wake up from our slumber so that we could become renewed by his word into who he's called us to be. As my reformation begins in my house, the revival will start and turn into an awakening and the gospel of the kingdom will finally be preached to every nation. And that, that's another thing. We have done an amazing job preaching the gospel of salvation. But when you stop at the salvation and don't preach the fullness of the spirit, there's the gospel of the king. We're called to raise the dead, heal the sick, cleanse the leper. We are called to, to all of the works 
of the kingdom. Whatever it takes for Jesus to have a bride, that's what he's given us, the gifts inside of us. Those in darkness will see a glorious light, and they will call on the Lord and be saved. This is my 2030 agenda. I am king, and I am Lord. I truly believe that, you know, we, we hear a lot about Davos and the whole deal of what the Noah Harari and that whole group of people, they have a plan and they try to intimidate the world by their plan. They started to unfold that and unveil it in 2020. But the good news is God has a much better agenda. And his is going to not only take down that system, but he has a plan to bring his lost sheep home. So we don't, we don't need to ignore what the enemy is planning. That means we have to use our authority against it. But we don't have to be overcome. And then the Lord gave me on 717 RNC. Um, this is obviously when the uh, Republican National Convention was going on. But quickly said in my spirit, I'm recommissioning the nation's church. This is a season for the American church to become influential in the land once again. I'm positioning her for the greatest glory in this hour. She is waking up and taking her place on the world scene. And I'm going to pause right there. You know, the church for so long has um, only been acknowledged with a few anointed men and women of God throughout the decades. You know, we've had our Amy Symbol McPherson's. Or Roberts, we've had Ron Harbonke, we've had Billy Graham, and they've been amazing. We thank God for them. We wouldn't be here. The Kenneth Hagin, we just wouldn't. We love them. But the Lord's church got minimized in the midst. People began to fall movements and men, but they weren't really following Jesus, the the, the church of the living God. And this is that season that God is going to cause us to be a force, if you will, to be reckoned with in the world system. No, we don't fall, fight with flesh and blood, but we come with wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. You know, there are other nations. We actually know um, a man, a bishop from Kenya, and his father in the Lord, which is another bishop, they operate differently, but this man is now, you know, one of the people that the governments, the president and different ones come to for prayer and um, direction over the nation um, because of the wisdom that this man carries. But here in America, we're kind of mocked and we're kind of put on the sideline of our own doing, probably a lot, yes, because I don't know how much wisdom, also because of the enemy. But I think this season, that is going to shift. This is another thing that's going to shift. All authority and power have been given to her. It's time for her to go forth and disciple nations in my name. The name of Jesus will once again be lifted high in the land. I am calling this nation the United States of America, not the divided states of America. My unity will be seen and felt in the land as I release my tangible presence on my church. I am sending her out once again to proclaim the, my kingdom coming. Miracles, signs, and wonders will be seen and felt throughout this nation as my people are sent to every corner of this land. It's time to contend for the promise of Psalm 24 being released in this hour. A couple of years ago, before we got to this season, the Lord told me that, that um, 2024, that he would release Psalm 24 in this hour. And in that, I saw, and at that time, I did not state it, but in this, I saw strongly, I felt that um, um, number 45 would be the one um, who would get in. And um, But I knew that wasn't the reason for Psalm 24 being released. It was just part of God's plan. And I'm seeing more now um, in this season. I'm also reminded of a Kat Kerr vision that she had in the early stages of 2020. Of 2020. And um, she said that she was in the spirit and um, she had a moment. And then all of a sudden she said all the cars stopped on the bridges and everyone got out of their cars and they hugged each other and they were jumping up and down and they were crying and they were weeping. And in it she knew that um, 
45 was elected. Well, at that time, we thought it was for 2020, but I believe it's for this one because how much more precious now is that reality? We all wanted that to happen in 2020 because we knew what the prospects of were having people who didn't love God to rule our nation. Can you imagine now after we've seen just in three plus three and a half years, what could happen? What would another four years be for America? I, I don't, I can't say that we would have a constitution when it was over. Um, I, I just don't, I don't know that we would survive that. So it, it, we know that we have to wage a warfare for the next six weeks, five weeks, because the enemy's not going to give his, up his foothold that he has in this nation. I am the king of glory, and my righteousness shall be known in America. Once again, so press, pray, prophesy in my name till my church shines bright in the land, till she walks in love that releases my wisdom as I'm commissioning her to have influence once again. And the Lord gave me several scriptures for time's sake. I'm not going to go through them. But one thing I, I want to say here is I want to highlight, so press, pray, and prophesy. I believe Friday night, that's what we want to do for an hour. We want to take that opportunity in those types of prayers to push the victory. Lord, the Lord's victory for this nation. And, you know, some people in the beginning of uh, 2020 had a hard time, actually 2016, 2020, you know, the church was quabbling over, are we allowed to talk about um, politics or voting or people we believe we support? And I'm like, you know what, the thing of it is, is that that is a mute option. If we don't talk about it, looks what happens. Because if you have voice, if you have an opinion, if the Lord's anointed you, you should stand and speak now or forever hold your peace. Because this is the time to speak. The devil's not going to stop speaking, so you shouldn't be silent. He wants us to be silent. And this isn't that time. So, you know, I believe that God has brought a ticket, Trump Vance. I believe that that ticket is God's plan. But it's not about a party. It's about a people who stand for constitutional values and then also for, um, I do know that he is a believer, that both of them are a believer. Is he spirit-filled? Um, to my understanding, um, not yet, but I believe it's coming. Um, but I believe he's a man of integrity and kindness, and I, I know people who know him, and they speak highly of him, and I, I would be honored that I think we should, you know, just to think that the Lord has been merciful, that in the midst of this decision, we actually have someone to vote for. So I think it's important, and I'm speaking this more for the audience, if you're a Christian, you need to vote. You need to vote according to the Bible, because their statistics prove that the Christians don't vote. And that's a problem. We need to vote. That's the least we can do. We need to do more than that, but we need to at least do that. And then the next word is marching on, and um, this is in 814. Plot a course, prepare a path. These are the days of forward movement. The enemy is trying to get you stuck in the valley of decision by being consumed in the endless distractions. And I want to say, this is easy. It can be really tough stuff you got to take care of. It's not like distractions are just annoyances. Sometimes it's stuff you got to do, family situations. So th there is this focus, but don't let it take you away from your purpose and what he's called you to. Stay focused on me. Keep your eyes on the kingdom assignment. Keep your heart free from worries and care. Love deeply and wholeheartedly those around you with my agape. Forgive often. Do not let the weights and chains of offense hold you back in this hour. I'm telling you the other day, I felt the Lord said, there's a new wave of a spirit of offense that's been released among the people of God. And it was weird because I was feeling irritated over little things. Like I didn't even understand it. And then I heard that and I was like, oh Lord, that's what's happening. So I quickly repented. I'm like, God, don't let me be distracted by that because it'll separate you from the ones that God has called you to. They're the ones who have your back because they're of the same team. In this intense season, I'm going to release vision once again for my house. 
Hope will be released to stir up true faith in your heart to seek me. There is a grace being released in this season to know me and the new eyes to perceive me with new hearts. I am releasing wisdom to those who ask. Those who seek me with their whole hearts will find truth. This truth will be established in all your ways going forward. You are the new wine and I am commissioning you to build my new wineskin. Amen. And I want to say that um, I was listening um, to a preacher. Some of you may listen to him more regular, but Troy Brewer, or any of you are familiar. So he was speaking on Rosh Hashanah in the year 5785, and he was speaking. Um, I'm going to butcher this, so I'm going to break it down to Joanna E's, okay? But he he's, I mean, he understands things that are a little bit above my pay grade. Thank you. But, um, but he was talking about this this year, basically, um, this year, the word over this is it's, it's grace. It's five fives, and it is grace um, that God is releasing. But the way he explained this, because we've kind of boiled grace down a little bit more like a little sloppy agape kind of feel. You know, God's grace, God loves you, you have grace, grace. No, 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 this is powerful. This grace is the ability to accomplish that which you could not do before. So there are words over your life that you've tried to step into and you've kind of given up on them. But God said, no, the grace is released this year to step into those words. This is the season to try it again. This is the season to do it again. This is the season, if you have something you're struggling with, he talked about this in addiction. If, you know, it, it could be simple. It could be maybe the Lord's like, you need to get rid of sugar. You know, like anything can be an addiction. But there is grace released to overcome that problem. And it's supernatural grace, and we're in the year of it. So it, it's very important um, to not lose hope and not lose sight. And that's what these distractions will wear you down. So don't. This is a year of God's grace, and um, we're going to be able to step into things, which I believe this is part of why he wants to release grace to build his house. There's a grace in this season for his house to be built. And then my final word, this is the one, um, there's a lot in this, but I'm just going to read this. Um, we talked a little bit about mountains in the back, but uh, it's time, my bride, to partner with me and make the nations of the earth my inheritance. I have called you my anointed ones to invade seven spheres of influence and set up my kingdom. I've called you to displace my enemies at their gates, which is what we're going to attempt to do um, this coming, um, these Fridays. You must stand, rebuke, decree, and declare that these strongholds be broken down. Go to the seven mountains and tear down these demonic strongholds. The Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Parasites, Parasites, not the pair, but they might be parasites. Parasites, Gershagites, Amorites, Jebusites. But you know, that could be prophetic. We might look that up. That's right. Tear down the ites. Get rid of the ites. <laughs> we can make a whole song about this. Brody, work on that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, we could do hand motions. It could be great. Anyway, cause them to be scattered to the north, the south, the east, the west, and release the Lord of the angel armies to deal with them once and for all. And you know, it was crazy because I was like, God, that's like the battle in Daniel that was going on. The Lord of the angel armies was fighting the demonic realm. And so there is a real war in the heavenlies. I mean, we know this, but like, we have to release, do it God's way. Let God, like, those things, we take authority over their influence in our regions. But at the end of the day, the angels are going to have to remove and cast them out because they're the ones who have been anointed to fight those battles. We're called to, to fight it this way, and we release them to fight it God's way. Um, as I release my glorious church to preach the gospel of the kingdom, invade the territories with my wisdom and my truth, in that season, I will come in part as the eighth mountain that will fill the whole earth through my people. 
what I hadn't realized in this season as I studied it out a little in Daniel, you know the vision of the statue where he had the head of gold and silver and bronze and down at the bottom he had the feet um, with clay and iron and it broke apart. Well, we know where the, cl the feet of clay and iron, we've come to realize that's very possibly the AI movement we're seeing be raised up right now. I do believe that that is an indicator because at that time it it was Jesus' mountain that broke that apart. It took Jesus, because this, this space, the AI, they were, they're cloning. Their goal is to clone people and to clone God's creation. And he's not going to have that. He's the only creator with the big C. And, um, but he's the eighth mountain. But do you realize Christ in us, the hope of glory, we are in part that eighth mountain right now in flesh and blood. He told us to occupy till he comes. So right now we are a portion of that reality. My prophet Daniel saw this vision for your day. It is my kingdom that's an everlasting kingdom. My rule and reign will cause the nations of the earth to be mine through you, my Ecclesia. This season of a paradigm shift in the way you see yourself as my church, you are a five-fold new wineskin that's called to rule and reign with me from the heavenlies. You will dispel your enemies at the gates of these seven spheres of earthly influence. And many, um, like Lynn, Swanall, Bill Bright, um, Lauren Cunningham, um, there's a few others um, that have come and taught a lot on this, but we've come to acknowledge these five areas of influence as family, religion, education, media, arts and entertainment, and government. Now, obviously, God's not contained to just those departments, but these are some of the ways. But interestingly, we learned the other night when we were here at, at Take Action Chair, we were watching a film on how um, the communist movement have moved into our world and in, into our nation. And you know, that's exactly what's their plan. Their plan was to go into all the spheres of influence and they have determined that they have done it. They have actually done it. So this is why social communism is knocking at our door. So it makes sense that God is like, hello, you are going out there and getting in there with my authority and power and my rule and reign, and you're going to declare me Lord, and I'm going to set up my will and way in the earth in these areas. So this is another reason that I feel that God is going to give us more time because he has called us to this very glorious thing. You will raise up my truth that will transform these mountains and cause my glory and kingdom ways to be made manifest. The gates of hell will not prevail against you, my beloved bride, and all that call on the name of the Lord will be saved. We have Daniel 2, 44 through 45, Joshua 3, 10, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. You know, there are some abuses of anything that people believe. So that's always going to be in play. We're humans, you know. I realize I, I have studied for over 30 years, and I know that there's been some abuses of even the way the Lord's wording these things that people have come and tried to institute these movements without the power of the Spirit. But there again, they weren't in 5785. We're in 5785. So God's going to do this anew and afresh. And it's not going to be man-driven, but it's going to be Spirit-led. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And, and God is going to renew us and strengthen us. And we get to be a part of something amazing amazing and beautiful because in the end of the day Jesus gave us a command he told us to occupy till he comes so we have work to do and it's good work it's glorious work and we're going to get to see the nations of the earth become our Lord and saviors the very one that saved us when we had no hope or purpose when we had no being no understanding he saw us and he said them those they're the ones I'm going to do this with in my day. So I'm excited. I'm not saying this is easy. We just saw that last week almost took us down. I mean, we had one week of a series of events that were crazy. And it's still crazy. We got a, a lot of prayer and help, hands and feet. It's going to involve our flesh. It's going to be physically hard at times. But God is able. We cannot give up because he's got a plan. And we're part of that. So thank you. Thank you.
Joanna. Both are good words. Thank you, Lord. The Lord has given, um, gave me Isaiah 60, verses um, 2 through 4 today for, um, for Rosh Hashanah. And they tie very well into what both James and Joanna were saying. And again, it's from the Passion Translation. Look carefully. Darkness blankets the earth and thick clouds covers the nations. But Yahweh arises upon you and the brightness of his glory appears over you. Nations will be attracted to your radiant light and kings to the sunrise glory of your new day. Lift up your eyes higher, look all around you and believe, for your sons are returning from far away, and your daughters are being tenderly carried home. Watch as they all gather together, eager to come back to you. Amen. Woo! I receive that. <laughs> I receive that. So does anyone else have a word that just really dovetails right in? Tina, come on up. <laughs> Hi, yeah, I um, got a short one during worship, and it, the Lord reminded me of one um, back in 2021. So it's... Um, the one he gave me during worship is the force awakens. Just as a sleeping giant of evil has awakened, so much more my body of Christ. As the earth begins to rumble, the body will begin to move its legs, arms, and begin to stand. As the body arises and takes a stand, it will see evil in the land dissipate. Sound the alarm. Wake up. Wake up. Get up and take a stand for the king, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Body move, body move, body move. And from uh, 2021, so this is really a, a declaration from the Lord speaking to the ecclesia to arise. You cannot become my bride, broken, bruised, and out of joint and missing parts. I am coming for my bride who walks in wholeness. I speak to every part of the head to come into alignment with the mind of Christ. For the broken heart to beat, thrive, and love again. You cannot be a bride without love in your heart. To the appendages, move, walk, reach up, stretch toward heaven, and receive the love of my heart that refreshes and brings delight in me. I prophesy to the voices that are to carry my truth. Be revived with my breath. Breathe deep of me. I speak courage into those that are carrying my word and my truth and my goodness. Speak. No longer will your voice be silenced and restricted. You will declare my word. You have been called for now. Body, come together. Walk in the living power of my son. Walk in perfect unity as I walk with my son. Come together in the unity of my spirit and watch every knee bow, every, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Awake, arise, move in me, says the Lord, as you will have the courage of Joshua, the victory of Gideon, the love of Stephen, and the power of Elisha. Very nicely said. I love that word. Michelle, you had something? Okay. Boy, this has been a season. Let me tell you, I haven't been up here in a while, but thank you for praying for me when, when I've been having so much pain in my body. My mom's in the hospital for the second time in five weeks, and just a lot of stuff going on, just a lot. So uh, I, I get kind of down because I know about the distraction. I know what the enemy's trying to do, and then I feel bad because I don't have time to spend with God, alone with God, like I normally do. But you know what? My daddy's greater than anything. My daddy's greater than any distraction or any enemy that, that comes along and tries to trip me up, right? So tonight, um, 
I was talking to a couple people, and with Debbie, we have the authority in Christ. You know, she just walked past me and reminded me what we were talking about and what Joanna said, evil must bow. And I thought the Lord is saying, expect the impossible. And so tonight, I felt that the Lord, I know he tells me a lot, you know, don't give up, and I love you, and all these encouraging things. But tonight is more of a commandment with this mix of things. I mean, a serious serious commandment. So I felt like, okay, yes, sir, you know, uh, because this is like, listen to me. This not, this, tonight I heard him say, remember children, do not fear. Did you hear me? Do not fear, ever, no matter what. Plead the blood of Jesus over your territory. That means your family, your home, your pets, the land, the community, and all you know that you are in charge of. I will hold you accountable if you don't obey me. Now you know I'm serious. Your words will change the situation. You have heard me say this many times, now do it. Yes, this is a hellfire and brimstone word. I kind of laughed, you know, there. When you get to heaven, you will see all that was avoided and changed through my words coming out of your mouth. I've not called everyone to the same gifts. Even those who have these gifts of prophecy and seeing demonic in many places do not follow my instructions. Ready for the next command? Praise and sing and dance. Celebrate the end before you see it. Call fire. Fire down from heaven. Do you hear me? Call fire down from heaven. <laughs> That's what he said. You are walking through the fire again. You will not be burned like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like Daniel in the lion's den, like David fighting the giant. Goliath was evil, but his, he was, his spirit is still working in my enemies. My enemies are your enemies. No more playing games like many believers do. Put on your armor and cut off the head of the giant or you will be defeated. Amen. <laughs> I need you to hear me loud and clear. Speak my word and use my word to prophesy. Praise and sing and dance. Rebuke the enemy and change the atmosphere by running the giants out of your territory, your territory. Pray in tongues as often as you can. Pray. And like I've told you before, meditate on me. Meditate means calm, train the mind to engage in devotional contemplation and especially prayer. That's what I saw it meant. Ezekiel 37, 7 says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a loud noise and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. So let's do it, right? <laughs> Alan, come on up. So it's important for us to remember that our words, we declare, decree, stay in God's presence. We've heard that so much this year. Hi. I'm so glad of the timing for this. I was up in the mountains today trying to inspect North Carolina. I have this private eye kind of part to me, and I wanted to see it for myself. And, uh, but I was praying, and the Lord gave me what she just said. I'm crossing into Georgia from North Carolina, and the Lord said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. And he gave me a sermon. So, but a preface sentence. For the past six months, I've been like saying in prayer meetings, and I say, Lord, please show up. Let's have the unity of the Spirit. Come down, Holy Spirit. And I don't hear a thing. And as soon as I think of someone that's in desperate need and we start praying, the gifts of the Spirit flow instantly, furiously. 
with words of knowledge and God says, this is what they need to be healed. And we've been praying and people have been getting healed quickly. That's God, not us. God said, the super glue of the end times is above all walk in love. Above all walk in love, above all walk in love. That gets the unity of the spirit. That gets the unity of the brethren. Above all, the epistles say, above all. And he says, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. And he says, look at the book of Daniel. Who died? Nobody. Look at the book of Revelation. John. The Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in the fiery furnace. A lot of people do not understand why John was on the Isle of Patmos. Is because the Roman army had tried to burn him alive at the stake multiple times and he would not burn. And God said, faith, hope, love, the last move of God for the unity of the brethren to make the five-fold ministry work to be the perfected, pure, and spotless bride is to be perfected in love and you will not be killable. <coughs> you will not be killable. They couldn't kill John. They will not kill you. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. You will not be killable. Praise God. Love never fails. <laughs> John, did you have something? No? Okay, I thought I saw another hand coming from over there. Anybody else have a word that they want to declare that the Lord has given them? Have a personal word for anybody? No? Okay. Well, I think what we'll do is go ahead and close... The meeting and we will turn off the cameras so that way um, we will be able to discuss regarding what's going on in North Carolina. So um, Father God I just praise you and thank you for this wonderful evening. I thank you for the words that have come forth. We pray protection over all that are here and as they go home them and their families and their vehicles that everybody be safe. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor, and thank you, Father God, for being here and speaking through us and helping us to understand things that are going on. We look to you. We give you glory. We declare your word. We speak in love, and we give you all the glory, and we thank you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Well, amen. Uh, doesn't matter. I've got a mic here. Uh, we're curious as to what people know about the situation that's going on in uh, North Carolina and that we may pray for it because we've got a prayer tomorrow night. And we want to understand if God has put this, you know, in front of us and almost put it on us. I mean, it, it could have been us. There's a lot of things going on, but we want to sort of get an idea we do have some people here who have some information. Some of it's contradictory, so we want to find out what is it that's going on. Because this is a critical time. And I want really like Holly, who's got a place up there, uh, to sort of let us know what you know. And then any first-hand accounts that people have from people they've talked to, we'd really like to hear that so we can pray for all of this. So you got, I know you've got first-hand account, right? Okay. Well, just uh, share what y you know, and let's find out, because there's something, something very big going on there. Well, as I said earlier, FEMA's behaving. Um, what I'm reading tonight, just in the last few minutes, is that um, there, some people are being t turned away that have heavy equipment to help. And so there's not good communication. I don't know. I don't think that that's necessarily anything nefarious going on. I think that it's just not well organized and not well communicated. Um, it looks like there, as far as Ash County is concerned, because that's my focus, I can see everything else and I've been pouring over it for days. But as far as the little county where I'm from, there are still people who have not been recovered. Um, as 
they haven't been able to go to every single house, but they are making strides with that, either by horseback or um, ATV. The places the ATVs can't go, the horses can, for the most part, to check on people, take supplies. Um, I don't know the very uh, detailed story of this, but I talked to a friend of mine who has been really in the throes of helping people all over the county, and um, she's well connected. Um, and she told me that a friend of hers had been doing some of the more rescue type things, going door to door in the hard to reach places, and that he had discovered two bodies. I don't know if that was in a house or if it was just washed because of mudslides but he didn't have the heart to leave them there, and so he had put them on the back of his truck to bring back to wherever they needed to go. So, I mean, that that's the reality. It, it is. Yeah, it really is. Um, just, <sighs> I had a small slideshow, but it's not a lot. I really didn't want to inundate with pictures that I couldn't tell you pretty much exactly where they are. I don't know my county like the back of my hand, but I know I recognize a lot of the places. And some of the places that have been shared on that page um, are from other counties, like the next county over, which just like here, you know, you drive down the road, you're in Cobb County or up the road. And um, so it's, it's all kind of a tight-knit community to a degree. And the back roads that are really uh, destroyed cut across to the other counties. Um, I don't want to get into the theories. I mean, somebody else can. I don't mind if that happens, but I don't want to get into the theories of what they think might be going on up there and why there's such a slow response. I do know earlier that I heard that Governor Cooper wasn't signing off on something that would allow Title X military orders to go through that puts guys and women and men service members on active duty orders to be able to function under that Title X status to get to these places. But I also just read that a North Carolina coordinator with National Guard is coming to the area tomorrow and is loaded down to um, bring supplies. But they're wondering who where all they can go to deliver them, which means they are not getting a good response from the North Carolina state emergency system to, to facilitate and coordinate. They're going directly to Ashe County, to these local pages. The sister of this guy posted anonymously and said, my brother's coming up there. He's the National Guard coordinator and wants to know who can confirm we can bring supplies. So it's just really disorganized and I'm not sure exactly I'm sure there's a spiritual component. I don't know if it's um, covert or overt. I don't. I don't know. I can't tell. Has the governor declared a state of emergency? Are they under the order? Yeah, yes. they are. Um, I'm not sure exactly. There was some something on line that I saw where Mark Robinson was being blamed for not making the vote. I think that, but. It, According to what I've read, otherwise his vote didn't matter. They had enough votes. Yeah, yeah so. I think it needs challenging the governor for the governorship. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, that's yeah. why. And the governor's a Democrat, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm just well. really having a hard time, except for the theories out there, yes. understanding why with weather manipulation they would take out Asheville, because that's a good part of the Democratic base. I can't imagine why, honestly. But, uh, yeah, uh, the only thing that makes sense is the lithium mining. And also, you've got some people there who probably aren't registered to vote in Buncombe County in Asheville. They're registered to vote elsewhere, and so that's not really their voting base. They're, it's not constituents who live there, mm -hmm. necessarily. Yes. Well, thank you, Holly. Uh, anyone else have some... In there's, Go there ahead. is um, a lot of witchcraft in Asheville, a lot. Um, I lived there briefly. In Waynesville, I do have a friend in Waynesville. She said um, that she's not allowed to go anywhere. The roads are just, most roads around the area are impassable. So um, she's not gone anywhere. She's just hunkering down. 
um, also um, um, an individual who follows things very closely um, has subscribers that send in updates. They, you know, like firsthand experience. And um, harrowing information is that there were children that were um, strapped and or roped to things that would float so that they could survive and they can't find parents. And the children are still walking around with the boards or logs or whatever still attached to them. That's how they're finding them. Um, and the, the body count is going to be far greater than anything that it, they're, the media is even touching. It, it will be in the thousands, not if, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because there's so many missing right now even. The other challenge in that area is right now is when it's ramping up for leaf lookers. I mean, the leaves aren't peaking right now, but it's still, it's getting cooler weather. It's getting that, that fall is in the air. Um, and so there are a lot of people who were vacationing there because they had no idea that it was going to get this bad. And actually the hurricane isn't, wasn't the biggest threat. It was the storm before it that brought all the rain and caused some of the flooding happened because it hadn't they were in drought and so the rain couldn't penetrate the ground because it had been dry for a while and then you had the um the threat of the dams um failing and in order to prevent catastrophic failure they had to release some water and that actually was that caused some flooding but it wasn't as much as if the dam had failed entirely Uh -huh. Yeah, I think the one at uh, Lake Lure. Yeah. Lake Lure. Okay. So, anyone else got some first? When I say first hand, I mean you know of somebody that you've talked to. Yeah, I was just going to say, too, regarding the um, water. I mean, Joanna and I, we were listening uh, to Lance Wanow right before we came, and he was talking about 40 trillion gallons of water in this storm system. You know, not only just Helene, but all the storms that were spawned by it that came right before and, and during. 40 trillion gallons of water, and uh, that was released over the southern states, and that's 6 million Olympic-sized swimming pools, if you, uh, if you do, do the math. And so there was literally nowhere for this stuff to go, and, uh, and the ground, as you had mentioned, was already at a drought level, and so it was very hard to penetrate. And so, you know, when we're seeing this and we're seeing what's, what's happening here, you know, it's so imperative for us to stay, you know, really listening to what the Lord is saying in the, in the middle of this. And I, I just cannot get over that astronomical number. Uh, he said something that was about enough to fill one state with three and a half feet of water. I was like, it was, it was nuts. Absolutely nuts. Go ahead, John. Uh, three sentences here. Uh, I was a student at Appalachian State and I was a geology major. So I lived up there for years. And the, the issue is, one the main issues is that on the eastern side of the Blue Ridge, okay, which is like Blowing Rock to Asheville to Black Mountain where the ridge drops off to the Piedmont, the ground is totally unstable. It's constantly sliding down even without the rain. And roads were constantly falling off the mountains the years I was at App State without the rain. And with this enormous amount of rain, it's exceedingly hazardous on the eastern side of the slope of the Blue Ridge. If you want to help, come from the west. Don't come from the east. Because literally, we would drive our buses for our soccer games and wonder if the road would be there after, after a one-inch rain. We would say, well, when we come back from, way, uh, from uh, East Carolina, uh, will the road be there? Literally, the roads were falling off the mountains. So it's been a problem already. So landslides are a huge issue, especially on the eastern side. John, you got... Three, 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 okay. Uh, our uh, daughter Leah lives in Asheville, uh, downtown next to the river. Uh, 
it took a few days to get a hold of her and she was able to make contact with us through WhatsApp because there was still some internet at a nearby library. Um, she's just now been able to start doing some downloads. So I'll, I'll share her text with you as a first-hand report if you want. I mean, it's just one, it's just one point, one observer. So, uh, but it's encouraging. Um, okay. I know there have been some uh, bad times, but I'm telling you, the communal love for each other surprisingly, amazingly outweighs any of the individuals losing their sense. Uh, I can't message groups, only individual contacts, so please forward my messages. Uh, da -da -da -da. Um, let's see, about to walk up to the street right now to grab a few bags of ice just to melt for more drinking water. Uh, they just brought uh, Porta Johns to our complex. She was in an apartment complex of three buildings, and the water got up to one of the buildings, but uh, her building was high enough that it was spared from the highest water level. So that was a blessing. Uh, she says, we have so much food and water, it's, it's really unbelievable. Uh, but no running water still and power in ex is expected to come back on tomorrow night. Uh, which is Friday, this coming Friday night, I guess. But if not, it will be very soon. We are right next to downtown, and so many restaurants are passing out hot uh, free meals and everything, too. I've just been cooking over a fire in the parking lot for most, uh, but, uh, but, but for the most part, we're completely set. Uh, I was able to fill up my tank with gas and pulled a couple hundred out of the ATM just today that got turned on. Uh, I'm probably going to hang out with some friends. I'm blessed. I was uh, telling Dad earlier, the community has banded together and really has been so supportive. Everybody is taking care of each other in exceptional ways. It's really uh, cool to actually watch. Um, I just went into the Ingalls for the first time on Patton Avenue, and they had so much food in there still that is shelf-stable. Uh, they even had freezer meat that was marked down but still frozen. A lot of other things are hiked up. Some places are taking advantage of the prices since there's no way to get materials right now. Um, yeah, we're going to have a community dinner tonight. We're all making curry and hanging out by the fire. Uh, it uh, really hasn't been that bad for me personally, but my roommate has been struggling with Morgan's, uh, which is a morning, town. Morning. Morning. Yeah, morning. morning disappearance. Morning. It's some place that he was familiar with. Morning. Morning, the lost. Oh, morning, I'm sorry, that's right, yeah. Morning, the disappearance of his favorite places down by the river that he used to spend some time with. Um, looking forward to seeing the kids. Uh, let's see, there are random hot spots of power all throughout the town. I have another friend that I work with who doesn't have running water but has full power. He offered us to come over and use his appliances. Uh, yeah, especially those who had to hear people screaming for help in Swanoma in places like that after they heard the dam, uh, released the dam. Uh, I'm only able to text, uh, do, 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 do. take a lot of pictures, yep. Uh, yeah, yep. That was all the encouraging stuff, and then it gets into the ugly stuff with bodies and trees and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, anyone else, you know, talk to anybody from there? Um, I thought I, I thought Steve back there. Did he? Uh, did you talk to anybody? No, I have secondhand information. Well, it's. Uh, I mean, we'll get to secondhand information if that's what. Uh, yeah. Hello. Hello. Last night we received word that uh, from the sister of one of the people we were with that uh, she had just come out of the Ingalls up there. It, I, forget, I think it was Johnsonville. And uh, they had three family trucks pull up and empty the store out to take the food elsewhere where it was needed. And this is from an eyewitness. Now the person who was an eyewitness is a hardcore liberal or maybe was a hardcore liberal at the time. 
but uh, she uh, uh, is following through on that to make sure to see what happened, actually happened, try to talk to the manager and what have you. But I'm waiting for here about that. What, ag what exactly happened and why that happened. We suspect we know why it happened. But uh, remember, we're not working with people who really care about us. Okay. You know, our forefathers, 200 plus years ago, created a, a nation based on a Republican form of government. Our Constitution gives us rights, but it also gives us responsibilities. One of those responsibilities is to hold the feet of our government officials, who are our representatives. They represent the citizens of the United States. Whether they be federal, if they're local, they represent us, our counties, our cities. My opinion, and I'm not going to speak for anybody else, is that none of them are upholding their oaths or their responsibilities or their duties. None of them. Okay? That has to stop. We elect people to hold office, to represent us, and work on our behalf. Not anybody else's behalf. Not on the behalf of FEMA. Not on the behalf of corporations. Not on the behalf of foreign governments. Not on behalf of some NGO over in Davos. Okay? They're not there for that. They're here to represent us. Yes, we have rights, but we also have responsibilities. Our biggest failing has been that we have not fulfilled those responsibilities. We as citizens, we've gotten busy with our lives, tied up with everything, raising kids, building a business, whatever the case may be, but we fell down in that area. We did not follow through with our responsibilities, and so we have the mess we are in right now. We can change that, and we can change it very quickly. And there's a way to do that. Not kinetic, but just get very active. Our representatives, we can't touch the people in Washington, they're too far away. But those people in Washington work through our representatives here in the counties and the cities. Those people in the counties and cities live here. They're our neighbors. They're very close by. We know their addresses. We know where their kids go to school. We know where they work. We know where they eat. We know where they go for amusement. Okay? I think it's time we held their feet to the fire and let them know that they either do what we put them there to do or they get out or they change their ways. Those are the only alternatives they have. And if they don't do any of that, but they still kowtow to the higher beings, if you will, because they're not higher powers, they're just higher beings, okay, or they think they're higher beings, then it is up to us to impose pressure on them to such a degree that they get the hell out of there, okay, and play, replace it with somebody that will work on our behalf. I'm tired of politicians who are right there for us when, we get, when they need our vote, and as soon as they're in there, they're getting their hands filled, their pockets filled, you know, all kinds of goodies and benefits, and we are left by the wayside. So maybe it's time to start getting organized and start putting up posses, because I can't think of a better word for it right now. Maybe somebody else can think of a better word. But I think a posse on each of our commissioners, okay, to ensure that they hold, they hold their vows, okay? They, they keep the faith. They, they follow through with what they promised us going to be elected or the reasons why we put them there. We need to follow them. We need to talk with them, let them know that we are not satisfied with their performance and that we request that they change their performance to serve the people of their community. Period. Okay? If they don't want to do that or they want to argue with you, what have you, well, then we start playing big boy games. Okay? If they want to make our, if they are in the mood to make our lives miserable, and they're doing it, they're killing the future for our kids, our grandkids, they're killing the future for everybody here, okay? If they're going to do that, it's up to us to make sure their lives are 10 times more miserable, okay? And I don't say this in jest. This is serious, folks. You've got to start moving got to start taking actions, you've got to start organizing to make sure that these people feel the heat.
okay? Yes, we have rights, but with rights comes responsibilities. Let's fulfill those responsibilities as citizens and as members of this community. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Steve. <laughs> Someone did prophesy over him that he would back when he was here. Does anyone else? Yes. I'll just fly like a kite. <laughs> Thank you. I just got word from my daughter. Um, in my grandson is um, a fireman in Charlotte, and he's been on the search and rescue thing. Uh, I want my question was he's also a master sergeant in the reserves in South Carolina. So I asked, was he being deployed? Because I heard there a number of states are being deployed to North Carolina, but he's not because Spartanburg, where he lives in South Carolina, was so badly hit that they're not deploying the um, reserves. They're keeping them there in Spartanburg, North South Carolina. Um, he's okay, and he and my granddaughter have, my other granddaughter, um, have uh, power now. Uh, she didn't see anything about the water. So she said the, the, there's damage all around them, but for some reason they're okay, and he's just working in the fire department in Charlotte. Sorry, I forgot to mention one thing. In terms of becoming responsible, it's also incumbent upon all of us to be prepared. This is just an announcement. <laughs> Nothing else. This Saturday from 12 to 5, we are holding an emergency medical session. Our trainer is a special forces medic who's been over there a number of times and back again. And his job right now is training all the special forces Fort Bragg and elsewhere to come in. He has blessed us with his time to come over here and train. Uh, we've got several slots still open, available for anybody that wants to. Just let me know afterwards, okay? It's here at the center, here, right here at 12 o'clock. We'll start sharp at 12 o'clock. So, you know where the center is, I'm sure. So, <laughs> it's worthwhile to come. It's wound, wound treatment. Uh, special me emergency medicine, anything of the sort. So it's good to, good to have. We're not looking at anything serious out there, but you know, accidents do happen, okay? And serious accidents happen. And if you have the knowledge and the capability to respond and save someone or help someone, then I think it's incumbent upon all of us to have that capability to help rather than stand around and take pictures or take video of what's going on. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay. Uh Anyone else got any other information that uh, that we need to consider here? And because uh, I don't know who's going to be here tomorrow night, we want to pray for it. We just want to make sure you, you got. No, I'll, I'll be oh, good. Uh, uh, anyone else that? I mean, I've have watched a lot of videos, so I've definitely seen that. And there's a lot of questions about things that are going on. Apparently, there's a lot of you know robbery and different things that people are trying to you know. And there's troubles getting uh, materials there. And a lot of people have been turned away, supposedly, from being able to take materials. Um, so I don't know who's, who's in control and what they're doing. But um, it doesn't sound like, it sounds like we need to be prepared as a community to take care of each other when things happen. Yeah. And that we can't rely on the rescue of of, of, of a, big, a big entity, we need to take care of each other when these things happen because it's hard to believe that this was supposed to be here right. and it ended up there. Right. Yeah. And that could have, I mean, we got mountains too. We're on the other side uh, somewhat, but it's the same mountains and it, we could easily ended up in a mess very much like this.
because you know the water is going to hit the valleys and everybody knows in the valleys is where all the stuff is the bridges are down there and everything else and they the water goes through there takes all the bridges out and so they're you know it could be a very very bad scene and uh, once the government comes in i don't know what what controls i i don't understand why they don't have the you know some communications setting up you know cell towers you know, uh, temporary cell communications shouldn't be all that difficult um, and I don't know why they, there's there's not much information going but anyway it's rough very very rough and I understand there's still thousands of bodies and there's actually starting to stink out there with the number of bodies that are not being buried so I have no idea what the, the, the total is and you know, when it came to Lahaina and Hawaii, we never did find out how many people were. Did you notice that? They just basically just glossed over it. Said, "Mo, a hundred, maybe or so." No, there's there's a whole lot more here, and it may be a long time before we find out. And so, anything else that anybody's got? Because we'll pray about that tomorrow night. Just to emphasize what Holly said, a friend of mine on the way in here. I want to keep the names because they're well-known people, but it's her cousin that's up there. She's an attorney in Asheville, but she lives in Chimney Rock or lived in Chimney Rock. So there is a lot, like, like Holly said, there are things that are being said. Not that they're fully not true. It's just not quite clear what's going on. But a couple things she did say is anything that you see in the media or on Facebook, it is much more, they are downplaying this way less. Thousands, it will be dead. She said 200 people is a joke. She, she's like, it, it's going to be in the thousands. And, and as far as our community goes, there is, there, there is a quartz and a lithium. It's quartz too, that's an issue, and lithium. And the talk of demolishing, even including bodies, that's a real talk. Now, it's not been decided yet, but they're literally talking about bulldozing, all that, and just starting over. And they're going to give them $750 to buy groceries, not for the land, but, but for groceries. And she's like, it's ridiculous because there's nothing here. Where are we going? How are we going to go get it? Like, what are we going to do? So she said that, um, so her, um, their large church in the city is trying to get his resources together to get it to her. The problem is you can't get in there. So, um, I mean, he has the ability to get things um, air flown and everything, but, um, well, I, I'll tell you who it is because it, it would make sense, but it's Jensen's relative, and um, we're not online. I forgot we're not online, so it's Jensen. So Jensen was, is working, you know, because he's on Trump's advisory board. I'm sure Trump would help him in any way, but Trump is very active in trying, but the problem is the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing, so whatever he's been able to do with Starlink and other things, it's not translating to every area, and also that governor, um, it, yeah, they're, 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 they're trying, they're trying to find out, like, like, they're trying to figure out, like, at this point, it looks sinister. It, it looks sinister, That's what's right. happening. You did. So, I mean, you've got to give a little bit of latitude. Because, you know, the communications are down absolutely everywhere. And so that also makes it very difficult to be able to coordinate. And right. But I think at this point, I, th I think at this point, if someone can get in and has resources, you should just let them in to bring resources. If they've risked it. Oh, exactly. because they got the communications right. Yeah. So yeah. that's the other thing. The eighty yeah. is it the eighty fourth guard? There's airborne. What so they, they were surprised they so were deployed. That's they, the I the, so this is from the news source I follow. He said they're actually going to be deployed overseas, not there. Yep. 
So, so there's, there's, there's some weird stuff for sure. So going back to prayer, this weird stuff can get sorted out in the name of Jesus. And what they think's not going to happen, God's going to make happen. And that's a real thing. And I believe that we have, we have that opportunity. We at least, you know, I mean, because we're so close. I know all of us, especially with your family, we're all like, you know, part of me is like, be warm, be fed, pray for, you know, you just feel insincere with that. You know what I mean? Like, you want to do something. You want to find it. But the truth is, even if we had a million dollars, we couldn't help them right now because we wouldn't know where to put it, where to take it. But I tell you what, we do have a million dollars. <laughs> Maybe Holly, I'll trade for. But, but we're. But I know tomorrow night we can pray yeah. in those answers for that region and that community. And as we sow into them, God will sow into us in our time of need. Because trust me, it there there's a coming. It's almost. Um, Whatever you believe why the storm was headed this way, it was surely making a straight shot for this area. They're not staying out of conspiracy, but I do believe, you know, whether it's demonic or whether it's people filled with demons that are demonic, whatever it is, I believe that whatever would stop this election for our nation to be saved and our constitution to be spared, you better believe right now we are in the throes of anything that's possible the enemy is going to try. And so we need to, to humbly observe that, but boldly take our authority and continue to expose the plans of the enemy. I'm I'm completely humbled. I, did, I had the eeriest feeling about the storm. I wasn't in fear, but I had a feeling we slept in a weirder part of our house. All for it. And, and it was more weird waking up and finding out it didn't happen. I was gracious. It was grateful, but at the time I had no idea that five hours down the road someone was being destroyed. And so that broke my heart. You know, I didn't have the unction of the Spirit to pray for them. I didn't. I'm just thinking, I mean, where did I think that storm was going? It just fly out of the sky? No, it was going somewhere. But I'm seeing lessons learned. You know what I mean? Like, stay on the watch. Be more aware of everything. And I think for our community, it's what Steve said. We've got to get into the responsibility fact of, of our nation We've lost the reality of what even is civic duty. What do we even do with that? You know, so I'm, I'm learning too. So this is learning. It, it does trouble me. They gave them $750. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. It's exactly what they did in Lahaina. Yeah. Exactly. They gave them $750 each and that was it. And it's like, what? That was obviously some virtue. So, yes. Yeah. Oh, that's true. The illegals are getting, uh, what, 3000 a month? So, yes. So, anyway, we know that. So, let's deal with that, in the at least in prayer, and hey, be James, aware. Anybody else? Can I else? say just a couple more things? Yes, please do. I was trying to communicate a while ago, and I kind of got on a rabbit trail, that there are a lot of people visiting these areas. And some of their family, if they went for a weekend getaway, they may not know they're there. You know, if they don't keep in good contact. So with Joanna mentioning the part about possibly bulldozing and just whatever is there, and there could be people still alive. There are construction crews that found like five or six people who are alive under the rubble. And so it's really concerning to me to think that they may not ever know the identities of some of the people that are there. In hand with what I was saying about the constituents that are there, may not all be liberal because it's college town, college area, a lot of, I don't want to say it like this, but I don't, to get the point across, the grifter type people who are just kind of meandering along and stopping off there. Um, there's just a lot of different kinds of people there who don't permanently say that that's, that, where they be registered, but you're also looking at people who would normally do mail-in ballots or go to the polls they don't have mailboxes or houses for you to send the ballots to, and they can't get to the polls. So it. Amen. So, uh, anything else as far as any questions anyone's got? 
Well, let's definitely agree right now in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that somehow we are able to stay here in a, in a land that's very prosperous right now, Lord, compared to what those people are dealing with. But, Lord, we, uh, we pray for them right now. And Father, even in the midst of them, let them know you. And let, let whatever happens, Father, be a place of, of at least peace with you. So whatever these people are, Father, sh uh, show your mercy. Rescue them, Lord. Lord, only you can do these things, Father. There are people. There are people that have powers. There are people that have equipment. There's people that know things, Lord. And let them be moved by your spirit, Father, to do what needs to be done to rescue these people, Father, and expose any corruption or anything that's causing these harms. But, Lord, uh, only you can solve these problems. There's much, much too big for us, Lord. So we ask you to intervene, Father, in these lives and in the hearts of these people to bring the right resources and to help and, and restore these people back in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus.